There's an important distinction between cash management accounts and more traditional high yield savings accounts. CMAs aren't offered by banks, but by non bank financial service providers, like brokerages or investment firms. These providers partner with banks behind the scenes to sweep customer funds into bank accounts, thereby providing EFTIC insurance for customers' cash. Offering a CMA lets brokerage firms create more stickiness with their customers, said Ron Guay, a financial advisor in Sunnyvale, California. The longer term play is to leverage the relationship and upsell the customer to move these funds into brokerage accounts, which these firms charge a management fee on. Gwei said via email. Congress has directed the Pentagon to document troops' blast exposures in combat and training and include the information in their medical histories to help determine whether they are eligible for treatment and service connected benefits. According to language in the $738 billion defense bill signed into law last Friday by President Donald Trump, the histories will also inform future blast exposure risk mitigation efforts of the Department of Defense. The legislation also requires the duty and service branches to report to Congress within a year on their progress compiling the histories. According to a provision in the 2020 National Defense Authorization Act, the histories should include the date of the blast exposure and its duration. If possible, the measured blast pressure experienced by the individual during such exposure should also be included. Related, this brain game is helping vets with TBI improve their memory. The covered incidents to be part of the histories under the legislation refer to a concussive event or injury that requires a military acute concussive evaluation by a skilled health care provider, numerous reports and studies by the DUD, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and others have pointed to links between blast exposure and traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. According to the DUD, about 22% of all combat casualties from Iraq and Afghanistan involve brain injuries, compared with 12% of combat casualties in Vietnam. Traumatic brain injury (TBI), often labeled the signature wound of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, can go undiagnosed in its milder forms and result in issues for returning service members ranging from headaches, irritability, and sleep disorders to memory problems, slower thinking, and depression. According to the VA, these symptoms often lead to long-term mental and physical health problems that impair veterans' employment and family relationships, and their reintegration into their communities, it added. A VA study released last month stressed the need for long term rehabilitation for chronic TBI symptoms. It's new information that ongoing rehabilitation needs to exist in these chronic stages of TBI. Dr. Reza Nakase Richardson, a clinical research neuropsychologist at the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital in Tampa, Florida, said in the report, she explained that there is a common misperception among caregivers, providers, and patients themselves that rehabilitation services for TBI are relevant only in the short term after the injury.